you see in the background at the hatchway to their Soyuz spacecraft. Uh, the uh, 10 crew members that was then at that time Expedition 69 gathered for final pictures uh, before uh, the three departing crew members floated inside the Soyuz spacecraft and uh, hatches were closed. Uh, this hatch closed on the station side of the docking interface uh, between the Soyuz and the International Space Station, followed a few minutes later by the closing of the hatch on the Soyuz side. There were leak checks conducted. Uh, the three crew members uh, donned their Sokol launch and entry suits, conducted leak checks on those suits, and uh, they were all set uh, to depart the International Space Station. Communications and systems checks were also conducted uh, with the Soyuz uh, crew on board the MS-23 spacecraft before the undocking occurred. With all of the uh, systems on the Soyuz spacecraft in good shape, uh, the command was issued to open up the hooks holding the Soyuz in place to the Prashal module. And at 2.54 and 30 seconds a.m. Central Time, 3.54 and 30 seconds a.m. Eastern Time, the Soyuz departed the International Space Station as Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin left the complex that had been their home for more than a year. Within minutes after the undocking, Two uh, separation burns were conducted by the Soyuz engines to create an opening rate between uh, the Soyuz and the International Space Station, allowing the Soyuz to move to a distance of some 24 miles away from the station where it currently uh, resides, waiting for the uh, final uh, deorbit burn that is scheduled coming up at uh, 5 24 and 9 seconds a.m. Central Time, 624 and 9 seconds a.m. Eastern Time. The configuration of the International Space Station uh, before the undocking showed uh, the two Soyuz vehicles, as you see in this graphic, the MS-23 uh, that Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin are on board, the MS-24 spacecraft that was parked alongside of MS-23 was the vehicle uh, in which Oleg Kononenko, Nikolai Chub, and NASA's Laurel O'Hara launched on back on uh, September 15th. Once uh, the MS-23 undocked a few hours ago, it left uh, just the Soyuz MS-24 that was docked uh, to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. And at the time of undocking, Expedition 69 formally came to an end, and Expedition 70 began under the command of uh, Andy Mogensen that you see in the front row in this crew portrait, along with NASA's Jasmine McBelly. Uh, from left to right, Nikolai Chub, Konstantin Borisov, uh, Andy Mogensen, the new commander of the International Space Station, Ali Kononenko, Jasmine Mugbelli, Satoshi Furukawa of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and NASA's Laurel O'Hara. So Expedition 70 now underway on board the International Space Station. The crew members on the station uh, conducting uh, some experiments and some housekeeping in the wake of the departure of Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin. Meanwhile, uh, in Kazakhstan, which is the focus of attention, the NASA and Russian landing teams are uh, about to, to take off from the airstrip in Jezkazgan, the intermediary uh, staging site uh, for today's recovery operations. They will be uh, taking off in Russian Mi-8 helicopters, making their way in about a 35-minute flight to the landing site in south-central Kazakhstan. Uh, they are uh, also accompanied by all-terrain vehicles and a, an Antonov 26 fixed-wing aircraft that is serving uh, today, as it always does for the Soyuz landings, as an airborne uh, data and communications relay center, uh, relaying uh, data and voice uh, from the crew uh, once it approaches the landing site back to the Russian flight control team in Korolyov. We assembled it successfully. Thank you. Good luck to you. 
A few weeks ago, uh, Frank Rubio, who is the new all-time record holder for the longest single space flight in U.S. history, had an opportunity for a uh, brief chat with the former record holder, NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei, whose record stay of 355 days in space was eclipsed back on uh, September 11. Let's take a look at that quick conversation between Rubio and Vandehei about tips that Vandehei provided Rubio about today's entry and landing. Since it's been a long time since your, your Soyuz instructors talked to you about landing and what to do, I'm going to remind you about a couple things that I might have made a mistake on. I succeeded with keeping my mouth shut when we hit the ground. That was a good thing, so I didn't bite my tongue off. And, uh, but make sure you do keep your head in the seat. You will have the strength to be able to lift your head off the seat. So when you're tempted towards the end to check how, uh, how far above the ground you are, don't do that because it might creep up and get you before you thought, thought it was there because you do hit just as hard as everybody says you do. Yeah, the good thing about that is that um, I'll have some uh, help because I think my spine has uh, extended just enough that I, I kind of am wedged into my seat liner, so I shouldn't move very much at all. Frank Rubio, a medical doctor, and now the uh, new record holder for the longest single space flight. Once uh, the deorbit burn occurs, as you see in this animation, it will slow the Soyuz down by 128 uh, feet per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit. The pyros will fire about 27 minutes later to separate the three sections of the Soyuz vehicle, the descent module that the crew is strapped in, uh, ready for entry, the only piece uh, of the Soyuz that survives with its heat shield pointed in the direction of travel. About 15 minutes before touchdown, parachutes will deploy from the Soyuz in a carefully choreographed sequence that uh, will enable the Soyuz uh, to gently sway toward the landing site in Kazakhstan. Just a few seconds before touchdown, the soft landing engines will fire in a final braking maneuver, and the Soyuz will have touchdown. Again, the touchdown point about 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan in a remote area on the steppe of Kazakhstan, where the Russian uh, search and recovery forces comprising the Ros Aviatsa Civil uh, Patrol uh, will be waiting, uh, along with RSC Energia personnel, to uh, begin the extraction of the crew from the Soyuz spacecraft. Once out of the spacecraft, uh, the crew will be placed in uh, reclining chairs, comfortable chairs, uh, to enable them to have a few minutes to uh, regain their equilibrium. They will be feeling uh, the tug of gravity against their bodies for the first time in more than a year today. Uh, they will uh, then uh, be carried in those chairs to a nearby inflatable medical tent for medical exams and an opportunity to uh, uh, take their Sokol launch and entry suits off and get into more comfortable flight clothing. They will be uh, then carried uh, to uh, three waiting helicopters, MI-8s, Russian MI-8 helicopters, for a two-hour flight back to the staging city in Karaganda, Kazakhstan, uh, where they will split up, Rubio boarding a NASA jet for a flight back to Houston, and the two cosmonauts, uh, Prokopiev and Patelin boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for their flight back to Star City, Russia, and their training base outside of Moscow. The latest weather uh, reports from the landing site not quite as optimistic as they were earlier in the day. The temperature is hovering around the 70 degree mark Fahrenheit, but we're now looking at broken clouds uh, at around 6,000 feet. There have been some rain showers in the area. We are hopeful, of course, of getting video of uh, the Soyuz descending under the chute, but that will depend on the visibility and uh, how close to the bullseye target uh, the Soyuz actually arrives at as to whether or not we're going to get any meaningful video of its descent under its parachute. Some of the milestones in terms of the times coming up uh, as we approach the 10 minute mark before the deorbit burn is initiated. The deorbit burn again will uh, begin at 524 and 9 seconds a.m. Central Time. It will last four minutes, 39 seconds in duration, slowing the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit. The module separation that will occur 
takes place some 27 minutes after the deorbit burn. That module separation that is initiated by pyros uh, will separate the top section, the orbital module, the middle section, which is the descent module, where the crew is strapped into their seats, Prokopiev in the center seat, Patelin to his left, and Rubio to his right. The lower section, the instrumentation and propulsion All module, guys, uh, will be separated module. and discarded as well. The descent module, again, the only portion of uh, the Soyuz that survives the rigors of entry. Those rigors will first be felt at about 5.54 and 51 seconds a.m. Central Time as uh, the uh, three crew members reach uh, the first traces of Earth's atmosphere. They will uh, feel uh, the first effects of Earth's gravity in more than a year at that point as they then, just a few minutes later, enter into the plasma regime of peak heating where temperatures around the spacecraft will rise to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. That will last for about five minutes or so until they emerge from that uh, section of the entry timeline. Maximum G loads on the crew will build up to about four to five Gs against their bodies before the command uh, is sent to open up the parachutes at an altitude of 6.7 miles. That will occur at 6.03 and 13 seconds central time, 7.03 a.m. Eastern time. This parachute deployment sequence is triggered by a pressure sensor at an altitude of 41,000 feet. At this point, the parachute cover is jettisoned by pyros and springs that pull out two extraction chutes, which in turn pulls out the drogue chute. That in turn pulls out the main chute. This all takes about 20 seconds to occur. Then at some 21,000 feet in altitude, another pressure sensor starts a timer that triggers the remaining events in the landing sequence. At 18,000 feet, commands will be issued to jettison the heat shield. That's about three minutes after parachute deploy. Those commands also inhibit the entry thrusters and opens valves to vent all of the hydrogen peroxide fuel for the entry thrusters and oxygen in the life support system tank. If we have video at that time, you'll see a white vapor. That is normal. That white vapor is a combination of hydrogen peroxide and oxygen venting into the air. The purpose of this is to safe the vehicle for landing so that the search and recovery forces uh, that will be landing sequentially in their Russian Mi-8 helicopters after touchdown don't encounter any hazardous gases as they try to expedite the extraction of the crew from the Soyuz descent module. Maneuver and uh, turning off the fans of the high sock cooling and drown, drying equipment. Copy that and please continue reporting your status to us. And uh, the this is Mission Control Houston, now just seven minutes away from the deorbit burn, the initiation of the uh, firing of the Soyuz engine that will last for four minutes and 39 seconds, slowing the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second. You'll hear call-outs from uh, Soyuz Commander Sergei Prokopiev. The Russian flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov will be uh, calling the crew uh, on Prokopiev's call sign, which is Altai. That's uh, the call sign that you'll be hearing uh, for the Soyuz spacecraft as the calls are made uh, to the crew uh, during the final phase of today's landing operations. And on both inputs, you have to make the appropriate selection of the sensor and uh, select uh, lane E. on displays uh, control, monitoring, and maneuver, maneuver. The uh, three crew members are coming home in the Soyuz MS-23 that was launched in February as a replacement vehicle for the damaged Soyuz MS-22 that Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin launched on over a year ago in September of 2022. That vehicle was damaged uh, in, uh, on December 14th 
when it incurred a leak in its coolant system through its radiator, the coolant uh, was depleted, thus rendering uh, that Soyuz MS-22 unusable for the return of the crew. The Soyuz MS-23 was launched in February, unpiloted, made an automated docking to the Prashal module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The MS-22 was uh, then undocked without the crew on board and returned to Earth for a landing in Kazakhstan in the same vicinity that uh, these three crew members will be returning for a touchdown a little less than one hour from now. It was that coolant leak on the uh, Soyuz MS-22 that resulted in the extension of the mission by Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin from six months to the mission that uh, is coming to a conclusion today, 371 days, 157 million miles. Again, uh, Rubio comes home uh, with the longest single space flight in U.S. history, and this becomes the third longest space flight ever behind Valery Polyakov's 438-day mission to the Mir space station, followed by Sergei Avdeyev's Mir mission of 380 days. Less than three minutes now until the initiation of the deorbit burn. At the time of uh, the deorbit burn, uh, the Russian Mi 8 helicopters uh, with the NASA Russian landing team will be taking off in sequential fashion from the airstrip in Jezkazgan, the intermediary uh, staging site for tonight's uh, landing operations. An Antonov 26 fixed-wing aircraft uh, will also be in the area. This uh, airborne fleet will be conducting uh, a racetrack pattern flying around uh, the landing zone, awaiting the arrival of the Soyuz vehicle and immediately after touchdown, uh, those helicopters will begin landing in sequential fashion to enable uh, the recovery teams that are comprised of Rosaviatsa, the Civil Air uh, Patrol uh, Agency, as well as RSC and Nergia to approach the spacecraft, make sure there are no toxic gases uh, emanating from the Soyuz vehicle so that they, could, they can begin the process of opening up the hatch and extracting the crew. Ninety seconds away now from the initiation of the deorbit burn. One minute to engine activation and BIOS power is on. Copy. Russian flight controllers now uh, intently watching uh, their data. 30 seconds away from the start of the deorbit burn. Command. 
Thank you, Katie. We'll go Standing by for the beginning of the deorbit burn. Yes, we can get there. Roster activated at 13.24. And the uh, confirmation has been received that the deorbit burn is underway. This will last four minutes and 39 seconds. We'll be getting reports from Sergei Prokopiev on the uh, progress of this burn that will slow the uh, Soyuz down by 128 meters per second and begin uh, the journey home for Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin. We have 13.3 in 13 seconds, two kilograms so far, and delta V increasing, parameters are normal. Good reports so far on the progress of the burn. Two minutes, and we now have a 27 decimal inaudible. Everything looking good one minute into the burn. Three minutes left in the uh, deorbit burn. Everything uh, proceeding as planned. The deo combined propulsion system parameters are nominal. Pressure in the oxidizer line inaudible. Pressure in the fuel. Two minutes, ten seconds into the burn. Change in velocity and all of the uh, engine pressures looking good. Parameters are nominal. Three minutes into the burn, about another minute and a half. Pressure in the spherical tank is uh, inaudible. Three and a half minutes into the burn, just about one minute left. Ninety-five meters in uh, 30 seconds, and the KDU combined propulsion system parameters are nominal. Four minutes into the burn, everything is right down the money. kilograms of propellant and pressure in the spherical tanks is 81 in number two. About 15 seconds left. Yes, 
And the deorbit burn is complete and perfectly normal. Four minutes, 39 second braking maneuver. The Soyuz now is on its way home with Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin on board. Their journey coming to an end. Touchdown scheduled about 48 minutes from now. Is this good to open? The next milestone on the road home will be the module separation that is scheduled at 5.51 and 58 seconds a.m. Central Time. The pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz. Just to recap, the uh, Soyuz MS-23 on its way home following uh, the deorbit burn that was just completed uh, successfully. Uh, perfect timing, good pressure, good deceleration of the Soyuz, enabling it to uh, begin to slide back out of orbit into the Earth's atmosphere. This coming uh, in the wake of the undocking of the Soyuz from the Prashal module earlier this morning, at 2.54 a.m. Central Time, 3.54 a.m. Eastern Time. And again, in this animation, you'll see the next event. Uh, there is the module separation that will occur pyrotechnically. The uh, descent module where the crew is located uh, will enter the Earth's atmosphere. Temperatures around the spacecraft will build to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, heading toward the landing site in Kazakhstan. A series of events will deploy a drogue chute and then a main parachute about 15 minutes before touchdown. The uh, chute deployment sequence uh, will occur setting the stage for the firing of the soft landing engine just about one or two seconds before touchdown that is planned to be about 90 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. The Russian Mi-8 helicopters are airborne now, heading for the landing site, which is about a 35-minute flight. They will arrive in a circular racetrack pattern around the landing site that you see there, at the bullseye mark, moving from southwest to northeast, passing uh, just uh, south of Baikonur, the cosmodrome, where uh, the Soyuz launches take place, most recently Laurel O'Hara uh, launching with Oleg Kononenko and Nikolai Chub on the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft. They're now part, of course, of Expedition 70. The weather at the landing site uh, right now is uh, showing broken clouds at about 6,000 feet, light winds, temperature around 69 degrees Fahrenheit, and some rain showers in the area. So it is questionable as to what our visibility will be of the spacecraft descending under the parachute. We'll stand by, of course, and as soon as we have video from the landing site, we'll bring it to you. We're about 44 minutes away from touchdown. Once uh, the uh, spacecraft does touchdown, the search and recovery forces uh, will land in sequential fashion in those Russian Mi-8 helicopters. The uh, most critical personnel, the uh, RSC Energia personnel and the search and recovery forces will make their way to the spacecraft 
and begin the process of uh, opening up the hatch and extracting the crew one by one, placing them in nearby chairs alongside their vehicle. They'll have uh, a few minutes uh, to gain uh, some equilibrium, feeling the effects of gravity for the first time in more than a year before they're carried in those chairs into a nearby inflatable medical tent so that their Sokol launch and entry suits can be removed. They'll uh, receive initial medical exams and be uh, put in uh, more comfortable flight clothing for the subsequent uh, two-hour helicopter flight back to the staging city of Karaganda. Copy. Uh, I'll give you the time in a second. Okay, main engine cut off command 132847. Copy. How copy? Yes, copy. Our specialists are working now. One thing uh, that uh, we'll note here, in about eight minutes, as the Soyuz moves to a distance of about 87 miles away from the International Space Station on its uh, descent uh, towards uh, the beginning of uh, the traceable senses of Earth's atmosphere, uh, that will end uh, our guaranteed voice communication uh, with the Soyuz through a relay to the International Space Station itself, that VHF relay still in place and being uh, heard, of course, uh, by the Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. So starting at about 5.42, uh, the communications from the Soyuz will be a bit choppy. We may lose calm for a while, especially as the Soyuz descends uh, into the peak heating regime for about five minutes. Uh, that uh, peak heating regime will begin at about 5.56 a.m. Central Time. Often uh, communications is lost for several minutes until uh, the Soyuz emerges from that plasma regime that builds up uh, that ionization around the spacecraft itself. At that point, uh, the Soyuz will begin uh, to approach the area where voice communication will be established with the Antonov fixed wing aircraft that is flying in the vicinity of the landing site to relay data from the spacecraft as well as voice back to the Russian flight control team in Korolev. Three countdown clocks here in Mission Control are ticking backward towards major events that are upcoming. The separation of the uh, three sections of the Soyuz about 14 and a half minutes from now. The opening of the parachutes some 25 and a half minutes from now. Landing now just under 40 minutes southeast of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan. In addition, uh, right after the completion of the deorbit burn, the orbital module, the top section of the Soyuz spacecraft, the three-section Soyuz spacecraft, it was depressurized about 10 seconds after the conclusion of the uh, deorbit burn, setting uh, the stage for the module separation that's coming up. The uh, precise landing coordinates uh, being relayed uh, to the crew on board the Soyuz. The uh, current projection by the ballistics officers uh, for uh, the RSC Energia team 
at the Russian Mission Control Center shows the landing site at 47.20 degrees north, 69.39 degrees east. That is where the uh, search and recovery forces uh, will be positioned to greet uh, the Soyuz crew following touchdown, which occurs now 38 and a half minutes from now. Twelve minutes until module separation, the next major milestone en route home for Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin. This trio was launched on September 21st, 2022 on the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft that ultimately uh, was damaged, losing its cooling capability through a coolant leak in its radiator and uh, was rendered unusable for the safe return of the crew. The replacement craft uh, that is coming home today, the Soyuz MS-23, was launched in February, unpiloted, and the Soyuz MS-22 was uh, undocked and deorbited for a landing in Kazakhstan, unpiloted. The uh, coolant leak uh, resulted uh, in the extension of the mission by Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin that is coming to a close today after 371 days, the third longest spaceflight in human spaceflight history. The uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters are some 20 minutes out from the landing site, having taken off from the uh, airstrip in Jezkazgan en route to uh, the uh, touchdown point, which is about 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan. Those helicopters left Karaganda earlier this morning, several hours ago, flew two hours to Jezkazgan to refuel, and now are en route uh, to the landing site uh, to begin the recovery of the three crew members. And uh, we've reached the point uh, where the Soyuz is far enough away now from the International Space Station that the voice communications relay capability uh, through the station uh, is no longer available or should not be available. So communications may be a bit uh, sporadic and choppy from this point on through uh, the descent through the Earth's atmosphere. Nine minutes until module separation.
all of the events uh, leading up uh, to this point in today's return of Rubio, Prokopiev, and Patelin have gone by the book. The undocking uh, that occurred earlier today at 2.54 a.m. Central Time, 3.54 a.m. Eastern. Two uh, separation burns of the Soyuz engine uh, enabled uh, the Soyuz to back away from the station and accelerate its departure rate from the complex for the deorbit burn that occurred a short time ago. That was a four minute, 39 second retrograde maneuver, slowing the Soyuz down by 128 feet per second, enabling it to begin its descent back to Earth. We're less than seven and a half minutes away now from the next milestone that will be the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz, discarding the orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module, leaving just the descent module with the three crew members strapped inside Sergei Prokopiev, the Soyuz commander in the center seat, flanked to his left by Dmitry Patelin and to his right by Frank Rubio. Again, uh, voice communications uh, not uh, possible again through the relay from the International Space Station from the Soyuz spacecraft at this moment. The Soyuz now too far away from the station to provide that relay. This is normal. Everything is proceeding on track, coming up on the five minute mark until module separation. Just to recap, uh, the module separation is scheduled uh, just a few seconds before 5.52 a.m. Central Time, 6.52 Eastern. That will be followed uh, about three minutes later by entry interface at an altitude of 62 miles. The uh, first uh, tug of gravity against the three crew members' bodies in over a year at that point as they uh, begin the plunge back into the atmosphere. Some uh, two minutes after that, they'll entry into plasma where the peak heating around the spacecraft uh, will begin. Temperatures around uh, the Soyuz will build to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, the heat shield in the direction of travel for the descent module. As it uh, ablates or repels that heat, there will be an orange uh, fireball, if you will, around the spacecraft. This is typical for uh, returning uh, space vehicles coming through the atmosphere at their high rate of speed. This will be about a three minute uh, regime in the plasma 
for the uh, three crew members. Once they emerge from that, uh, G-loads or the uh, G-forces against their bodies will build to about four to five Gs just after 6 a.m. Central Time. The uh, command to open chutes it will be initiated at 6.03 and 13 seconds a.m. Central Time, 7.03 a.m. Eastern Time. Again, that parachute deployment sequence triggered by a pressure sensor at 41,000 feet. The uh, main parachute cover will be jettisoned by pyros and springs pulling out two extraction chutes, which in turn will pull out the drogue chute and in turn pulls out a main chute, about 20 seconds for all of that to happen. At an altitude of 21,000 feet, another pressure sensor starts a timer that initiates all of the remaining events in the landing sequence. At 18,000 feet, commands will be issued to jettison the heat shield. That's about three minutes after chute deploy. Those commands inhibit the entry thrusters and open valves to vent hydrogen peroxide fuel for the entry thrusters and oxygen that is in the life support system tank. If we have video at that time, we'll see whether we will or not, but uh, there will be a white vapor that's normal. That's a combination of hydrogen peroxide and oxygen venting into the air to safe the vehicle for landing so that no hazardous gases are present when the search and recovery forces land in their Russian Mi-8 helicopters to begin the process of opening up the hatch to the Soyuz and extracting the crew. We should be about 30 seconds or so away from module separation. We'll be standing by for that confirmation. And now reports uh, having been received from the Russian Mission Control Center of a nominal separation of the three sections of the Soyuz. Module separation is now complete. That all went by the book. The next uh, milestone about three minutes from now and that will be uh, the Soyuz hitting the top of the Earth's atmosphere. Station on two for OCT two. The Russian Mi-8 helicopters, part of the Rosaviatsa Search and Recovery Forces, are nearing uh, the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan to uh, move into a racetrack pattern, uh, an oval-shaped uh, pattern around uh, the landing zone, awaiting the arrival of the Soyuz spacecraft with touchdown scheduled about 23 and a half minutes from now.
flight controllers in Korolev outside Moscow receiving uh, data from the Soyuz spacecraft through their communication satellites, the Luch system. The Soyuz now uh, has entered uh, the Earth's atmosphere. The three crew members feeling uh, the first effects of gravity on their bodies in 371 days. Just over eight minutes until the scheduled uh, deployment of the parachutes. Soyuz uh, currently descending through the Earth's atmosphere, six and a half minutes to go until uh, the commands will be sent to begin uh, the parachute deployment sequence. As expected, uh, we are not receiving voice communication from the crew. This is typical at this point of the entry sequence. Once. Uh, the spacecraft uh, passes through the plasma regime, the period of peak heating. Uh, we should be hearing from the crew once again with communications relayed through the uh, Antonov 26 fixed wing aircraft in the vicinity of the landing site. You're looking at a view from uh, balcony camera in the uh, Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow, their International Space Station Flight Control Room. All is quiet here at Mission Control in Houston as uh, flight controllers belonging to the Orbit 1 team continue uh, to watch over the International Space Station and follow developments on the Soyuz's descent for its touchdown in south-central Kazakhstan. Landing is scheduled just over 19 minutes from now.
As we approach the top of the hour, we'll be standing by for confirmation of a shoot deploy that is scheduled uh, just over three and a half minutes from now. The Soyuz uh, should be emerging from that plasma regime any minute. standing by for the emergence of the Soyuz from that plasma regime. This is the point uh, where the crew is experiencing maximum G loads on their bodies of about four to five Gs. And there is that familiar beacon signal in from coming from the Soyuz MS-23. A report on maximum G. We have four decimal four maximum G load. Copy. Integral plus Integral plus one eight. The index is along the curve. House. Mode is automatic descent. Sergei Prokopiev, the Soyuz commander, reporting that everything is in great shape on board the Soyuz. And the uh, crew experiencing those maximum G loads, but they are through the plasma regime as we stand by just over a minute uh, from now for shoot deploy. Uh, notable and uh, G load is decreasing. Good communication now being received from the Soyuz MS-23. Uh, Integer, please report if you read me. Yes. And how are you feeling? We are feeling great. Thank you. End of control. Integral is plus one eight. Index uh, positive plus one. Copy. Sergey Prokopiev reporting that the crew is feeling well. Great news as the Soyuz MS-23 approaches its landing site in Kazakhstan. Touchdown expected less than 14 and a half minutes from now. We should be getting confirmation momentarily on the opening of the chutes. The Russian Mi-8 helicopters, a part of the search and recovery forces, are approaching uh, on station in the landing zone around uh, where the Soyuz will touch down 13 and a half minutes from now. We should be getting confirmation momentarily on shoot deploy.
12 and a half minutes until touchdown. Still uh, awaiting confirmation from the search and recovery forces that they have uh, the Soyuz in sight under its parachute. We now have uh, confirmation that the Soyuz uh, parachute has been deployed. Once again, uh, the Soyuz MS-23 is now descending toward its landing just about 11 minutes from now. Its uh, parachute has deployed. The crew is feeling well, according to Sergei Prokopiev, the Soyuz commander. All of the entry events have gone uh, by the book to this point. The uh, skies are uh, quite overcast at the landing site. Temperatures around 69 degrees. We're still waiting for video from the landing site. But the Soyuz uh, has uh, deployed its uh, parachute and everything is continuing to go as planned for an on-time touchdown just about nine minutes and 40 seconds from now. The uh, search and recovery forces at the landing site uh, now confirm uh, that they have the Soyuz in sight under its parachute. All of the events to this point have been a winner. Everything has gone uh, according to schedule and the crew, according to uh, Sergei Prokopiev, the Soyuz commander, is feeling well just eight and a half minutes until touchdown.
Now about seven minutes until touchdown. Everything uh, continuing uh, on course. The uh, chutes have been deployed uh, for uh, the Soyuz MS-23. It is gently descending under its large orange and white parachute. Search and recovery forces have the vehicle in sight. The Russian Mi-8 helicopters are circling the landing zone waiting for touchdown, at which point they will descend and land in sequential fashion to begin the process of arriving uh, at the capsule and extracting the crew. And there's our first view of the uh, Soyuz MS-23 under the chutes. Six minutes until touchdown. This video is courtesy of Roscosmos. Soyuz descending at its uh, normal rate of descent. Search and recovery forces are reporting back that everything is looking good from their perspective. There were some rain showers in the area earlier today. The Soyuz descending under a deck, several decks of broken clouds toward its touchdown point about 90 miles to the southeast of Jezkazgan. Again, this video courtesy of Roscosmos from the landing site. Inaudible. Less than uh, five minutes to go until touchdown. The extended uh, mission of Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin is now in the home stretch. Once again, uh, you're looking at uh, the return of Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin after more than a year in space. Less than four minutes from touchdown on the desolate steppe of Kazakhstan. The uh, parachutes uh, deployed as planned at 6.03 a.m. Central Time. Three minutes later, the Soyuz heat shield was jettisoned. Confirm. The next uh, event will be just a second or two before touchdown. That'll be the firing of the soft landing engine. Six engines fire to slow the Soyuz descent rate to just 1.5 meters per second. We observe you. We have a visual. How do you read us here? Corona the search and recovery forces uh, communicating directly now with Sergei Prokopiev, saying that they have a good visual on the spacecraft. Just uh, over two minutes until touchdown. It has been 1,000 meters. We are not able to connect with them in audio yet. 
We can hear them, they are not hear us yet. It has been 1,000 meters. We hear them, they are not Less than 1,000 meters from touchdown. So we are looking for the 20th and 52nd minute. Uh, plus 9 atmospheric bias, plus 18 index point 1. The crew is feeling well. Sergei Prokopiev uh, continuing to provide uh, reports back uh, to the search and recovery forces, indicating that the crew is doing well just over a minute until touchdown. The crew is doing well. Let them know. Cosmos 95409. For your information, the object has passed 500 meters and feeling well. 690 is out. Search and recovery helicopters are uh, circling uh, the landing zone. We might uh, see one of those helicopters uh, come into view shortly as uh, the Soyuz is less than 500 meters off the ground. We have come with the crew and they're feeling well. Prepare 100 meters to ground. 100 meters to go, the crew being told to brace for touchdown. Object getting close to touchdown. Object touchdown. Touchdown confirmed at 6.17 a.m. Central Time. Rubio's record ride comes to an end as he, Prokopiev, and Patelin return to Earth after a 371-day, 157-million-mile journey at the International Space Station. In work. The third longest flight ever in human spaceflight history is over with a pinpoint landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan. Out of search and recovery here, how do you read? Okay, all good. Once again, uh, Soyuz MS-23 has landed on the steppe of Kazakhstan. A bullseye touchdown for the uh, three crew members, Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin. 409, how do you read? Landing occurring as planned at 6.17 a.m. Central Time, 7.17 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.17 p.m. at the landing site that you're seeing right now in our live view. About an hour and 53 minutes before sunset. Nine fifty two is on the ground. The uh, Russian MI eight helicopters are now descending in uh, sequential fashion to uh, arrive uh, in the vicinity of uh, the spacecraft. You can see one of those helicopters in view. The uh, all terrain vehicles will be uh, moving toward uh, the spacecraft as well, repositioning themselves to enable us uh, to get video of the uh, recovery process, the extraction of the crew, and uh, the crew will be placed in reclining chairs next to the uh, 
Soyuz MS-23 for a few minutes uh, to regain uh, their equilibrium before they are carried in those chairs to a nearby inflatable medical tent where they will uh, doff their Soka launch and entry suits, get into more comfortable flight clothing, and uh, then make their way with uh, the assistance of uh, recovery personnel to three helicopters, one for each crew member, for a two-hour flight back to the staging city of Karaganda. At that point, uh, Rubio and his two crewmates will split up. Rubio will board a NASA jet to fly back to Houston. Prokopiev and Patelin will board a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft to fly back to their training base at Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. Well, I will circle one more time. Okay. Go a little bit further, 49. In this view, you can see uh, Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, landing in the vicinity of the spacecraft that's just out of the field of view. The uh, all-terrain vehicle that uh, carries this uh, television equipment that you saw the landing from uh, will be repositioning itself a short time from now and make its way to uh, the Soyuz as it documents for us. And hopefully we will be seeing the extraction of the crew and the crew being placed in those uh, reclining chairs by the capsule. One seventy-eight landing in its place. At the uh, Russian Mission Control Center in Korolev, outside Moscow, the uh, Russian words, Yest Posadka, they've landed, and a greeting welcoming Frank Rubio back after his record-setting mission for an American astronaut of 371 days in space. Oh, oh nine, checking coordinates. Forty-seven degrees, uh, sixteen minutes, forty-seven seconds. One minute, thirty-nine seconds. This 240. I'm following 49.
This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, uh, you're looking at video from the landing site in Kazakhstan mm -hmm. where the uh, Soyuz MS-23 touched down just nine minutes ago. The Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, have landed in the vicinity of the uh, spacecraft. They will soon uh, approach the spacecraft to begin the process of opening up the hatch and extracting the crew. The touchdown occurred right on time at 6.17 a.m. Central Time, 7.17 a.m. Eastern Time. 24 bias. Object is close by. This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, uh, the greeting uh, on the front screen of the Russian Mission Control Center, welcoming home Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Patelin, and Frank Rubio after their 371-day mission. Touchdown occurred about 13 minutes ago at 6.17 a.m. Central Time, 7.17 a.m. Eastern Time. It was a uh, pinpoint return for the crew 
landing uh, just as planned, about 90 miles southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. The uh, Russian uh, search and recovery forces, the Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, have landed to begin the process of extracting the crew from uh, the Soyuz. All of the events uh, beginning uh, with hatch closure late last night central time followed uh, by the undocking of the Soyuz from the International Space Station's Prishal module at 2.54 a.m. central time this morning and uh, the deorbit burn that occurred uh, several hours later. All of those events went uh, by the book. No issues whatsoever. Sergei Prokopiev reporting to the uh, search and recovery forces in the final minutes before touchdown that the crew was feeling well and uh, ready uh, for their return to Earth. This is Mission Control in Houston. Uh, we're still awaiting for uh, video from uh, the spacecraft at the landing site. Uh, the search and recovery forces are there. They are beginning uh, the work uh, to extract the crew from uh, the spacecraft. So far, uh, we do not have video alongside the uh, spacecraft itself, the uh, video resources at the landing site have to be repositioned from where they were to uh, show us the touchdown that occurred about 18 minutes ago.
Once again, uh, this video courtesy of Roscosmos, Sergei Prokopiev, uh, who was strapped into the center seat of the descent module of the Soyuz spacecraft, always the first out. He'll be followed by his two crewmates here shortly. Touchdown occurred uh, just 20 minutes ago at 6.17 a.m. Central Time, 7.17 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.17 p.m. at the landing site. The crew home after 371 days in space, the third longest space flight in history, and of course for Frank Rubio, the longest single space flight by an American astronaut. Did you realize that you are finally on the ground? Because it's been more than a year. So the result is the main thing. Just perfect, just ideal. That the overload was 4.5, greater than last time. So wet. I'll take care of you. All good. I'll just stay here, take care of you too. Don't, don't turn. Just, just stay where you are. Don't, don't jump. And we have seen all your greetings on Air Force. Anniversary, yes, and we also worked with the veterans of soccer teams here. Exactly. He ha has not changed at all. You look the same as when we were sending you off to space. So the date is ready. A copy of exchanging uh, greetings with uh, some of the members of the search and recovery forces, happy to see him for the first time in over a year. And uh, from the view we just had, it appeared as if the Soyuz was pulled over onto its side, Congratulations. as opposed to uh, being upright. Thank you. Easy, easy. Check the arm, check the cables, careful, easy. Frank Rubio, the U.S. record holder for the longest single space flight in history, back on Earth. Here you are. Don't fall. Very nice to see you. So great. We're all here. All went well. All the tasks completed. So we, we performed all the program and uh, performed additional tasks. Field test. What about the field no, test? No, we're not going to have a field test now. But tomorrow we'll have a Sozvizdia constellation experiment that is going to be an interesting experiment on uh, controlling manual descent. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Your foot this way. Hello, Frank. Great, thank you. Great, you are it's good to be back. You were the doctor on the crew, mate. How is on in the space? How is your mate? Fantastic. Yeah, everybody did really well. You look so, very well. Thank very you. Well. Thank you. It's good to be home. <laughs> thank you. It's good to be home. <laughs> thank you. Once again, the view uh, from the landing site, right by the Soyuz MS-23. Frank Rubio on the left, Sergei Prokopiev on the right. Check the arm on the right side. And Dmitry Patelin now being uh, removed from the Soyuz spacecraft. Easy, easy here. Turn. Legs. Turn back. Remove cables. A little higher, move him a bit higher. Frank Rubio receiving uh, congratulations there from Joel Montalbano, the International Space Station Program Manager, who along with uh, NASA's Chief Astronaut Joe Acaba, part of the NASA team on site. Okay. And a view of the uh, Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft. That uh, touchdown 28 minutes ago at 6.17 a.m. Central Time. Yeah, drink a little bit. Hold it. <laughs> Everything is in due time. We're here in the stepper of Kazakhstan. Sergei Prokopiev, uh, the uh, commander of Expedition 69 and the Soyuz commander for the uh, landing today, comes home uh, after two flights in space and a total of 568 days, putting him 12th on the all-time list for most days in space by a human being. And there are uh, technicians uh, who are gathering up the parachute that uh, deployed about 15 minutes before touchdown. Yes. 
пачку все Я прошлый раз когда начал колбасить? А также тюрьмачок сейчас больше не надо, да? So we had that. Um, it was a bump. Um, so it did feel it. This is Mission Control Houston continuing to receive video from the landing site in south central Kazakhstan. On the right, Sergei Prokopiev, uh, the Soyuz commander and the commander of Expedition 69, which came to an end with the undocking of the Soyuz MS 23 this morning at 2.54 a.m. Central Time, 3.54 a.m. Eastern Time. Expedition 70 began. Prokopiev handing over command of the International Space Station to European Space Agency astronaut Andy Mogensen. Expedition 70 now well underway and will continue uh, through the course of the fall time frame until uh, Mogensen returns to Earth next spring with Crew 7 about 300 meters uh, come was established again. And at that time, we also acquired the visual. All, all normal, all good. Did you see us at the main shoot? Yes, at about 800 to so you already. You were not responding, well, but we were able to see you already. All great. All, all normal. Good numbers. 140 to 90. Don't, don't scream over there. <laughs> The next step uh, for the three returning crew members, uh, they'll be, as you look at uh, the all-terrain vehicles that are on site, the three crew members will be uh, carried in those chairs into a nearby inflatable medical tent to doff their Sokol launch and entry suits, get into more comfortable flight clothing, and then they'll be uh, transported in those ATVs to uh, three awaiting Russian Mi-8 helicopters to take off for a two-hour flight back to the staging city of Karaganda to the uh, northeast of the landing site. And, uh, Maybe you want some pickles? <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe some succulent uh, pork. That would be nice. Well, not right now, about a week. <coughs> so then uh, at the tent, we will talk to your wife, okay? The uh, landing occurred about an hour and 53 minutes before sunset at the landing site. You can see the sun beginning uh, to uh, fade on the horizon. On the left of, in the left side of your screen is uh, Dr. Joe Schmidt, who is Rubio's attending flight surgeon. And on the right is uh, the NASA nurse, Yana Shalapova. And then once we got all packed up, we could reach it. So, okay. so, 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 Okay, good. Как раз с арбузом. Рада вот она. Вечер добрый. 
Good day. I am the commander of the search and recovery helicopter. So my apologies if uh, we had to wait a little bit. But uh, from all of us, we would like to give you this, the fruit of the earth. Oh, I can smell it now. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Dmitry Patelin, who was board engineer number one, he and uh, Prokopiev conducted six spacewalks during their time on board the International Space Station. As they should have. What did you bring from space? Good mood. And in my personal items, I had all the rings and crosses that I took with me. This is something green. I forgot what it feels like. I, I, did, I did request the watermelon in advance, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Let's move it a little bit closer. Closer to the center. Dmitry, you've been there for a year. Yes, I, actually, I was expecting to be here half a year before, and we've been waiting impatiently to get back. And it was my first landing. I didn't know what to expect exactly. Today I felt it to the fullest, the, the loads of gravity. What did you bring to your daughters from space? I brought souvenirs, photos, images that were brought to me by Progress Vehicle. Are you going to follow some experiments right now as you returned as an operator? Like we are planning a uh, constellation, the experiments that is uh, with the suit and using the uh, arm. But they do depend on uh, physically is possible. Thank you very much. <laughs> the uh, crew members uh, being presented with uh, fruit at the landing site For you. and Matrushka dolls. <laughs> I can open it. Dmitry. Dmitry. For you. That is a heavy one. A heavy wooden doll, Matryoshka. Thank you and greetings to Kustana friends. Now pilots. <laughs> For a photo, they stand in the back. <laughs> Those Matrushka dolls are bearing uh, the images of each of the three crew members being presented to them by members of the search and recovery forces. I'm taking pictures of everybody. All perfect. Very good. 
The uh, Soyuz landed 40 minutes ago at 6.17 a.m. Central Time, 7.17 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.17 p.m. at the landing site. The crew was uh, quickly extracted, <laughs> placed in uh, these uh, reclining chairs for an opportunity to uh, regain uh, their equilibrium. They'll be carried in those chairs a short time from now into a nearby inflatable medical tent where they will doff their Soka launch and entry suits, get into more comfortable flight clothing, receive medical exams, and then be flown uh, on three uh, individual helicopters two hours to the staging city in Karaganda, Kazakhstan, where they'll split up. Rubio boarding a NASA jet to fly back to Houston. Prokopiev and Patelin boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft to fly back to their home base, their training base, at Star City, Russia. Pick up. Pick up the blanket. Prokopiev, uh, thumbs up, being moved uh, toward that medical tent. Hooray, welcome, welcome back. So with that, uh, the three crew members being brought into the uh, medical tent at the landing site following uh, their pinpoint touchdown to complete a 371-day, 157-million-mile mission, the longest space flight by an American astronaut, Frank Rubio, the third longest space flight in history. As we mentioned, uh, the crew members uh, were quickly extracted from the Soyuz MS-23 that landed on time, on target, and uh, are now uh, being brought uh, into the uh, nearby medical tent. And uh, there's a, a view of Frank Rubio with Joe Acaba and the rest of the NASA team helping uh, bring him into the medical tent. In the back, you see uh, ISS program manager Joel Montalbano. The crew uh, will get out of those Soka launch and entry suits. They'll uh, put on uh, comfortable flight clothing and uh, prepare for uh, their f helicopter flight back to Karaganda, Kazakhstan, and uh, eventually their trip back to their respective home towns. Rubio coming uh, to Houston, Prokopiev and Patelin coming to Star City, Russia. So with that, uh, the crew is now back in the medical tent medical exams in store for them as uh, they have landed after a f more than a year in space, the third longest space flight in history, a successful end to a, an eventful mission that was extended by six months, but ended uh, in great fashion with a bullseye touchdown on the step of Kazakhstan. Frank Rubio, Sergei Prokopiev, Dmitry Patelin, safely back on Earth. With that, uh, we'll wrap up our coverage for tonight and this morning. We thank you for joining us throughout the night. Stay tuned for more uh, to come on the uh, ventures of the Expedition 70 crew aboard the International Space Station. But for now, we'll 